the argument for the merits or advantages of the principle of checks and balances okay we look at the argument for the merit or advantages of the principle of checks and balances the mechanism of modern government has shown the impracticability of complete separation of powers thereby making the application of the principle of checks and balances imperative the principle of checks and balances, in spite of its violations of the theory of separation of powers and disadvantage as discussed above, has the following advantages. One, the application of the principle of checks and balances make government officials cautious and meticulous in carrying out their official functions. It brings about orderliness and efficiency among the owners of government. The principle of checks and balances leads to strict compliance with the provisions of the Constitution. It prevents the emergence of a detector. Fundamental human rights will be guaranteed. Also, liberty and freedom of citizens can be easily maintained if the principle of checks and balances is applied. The legislature approve of president budget, which is part of the principle of checks and balances, leads to the prudent use of resources. And finally, the application of the principle of checks and balances ensures that the use of public authority and organs of government are brought under popular control. So therefore, in as much as we look at the argument, the criticism against the principle of checks and balances, it also has its own advantages that is the argument for because we're looking at the disadvantages so one of the good things about the principle of checks and balances is that one political scientists said that one it brings about orderliness and eff efficiency among the organs of government because in as much as one organ is not becoming so powerful another organ can checkmate the activities of that organ that what happens it has a possibility of bringing orderliness within the governance system then of course the principle of checks and balances can lead to strict compliance with the provisions of the constitutions because for instance if the executive arms of government want to move contrary to what the state says and then of the day the legislative organs of government will able to come in and check the activities of the executive arms of government with regards to the provisions of the constitution of the state then fundamental human rights will be guaranteed because in as much as one organs of government cannot become so powerful that another organs of government cannot check media activities it also has a tendency that ensure that one the liberties and freedom of the citizens can be guaranteed and can be easily maintained if the principle of checks and balances is applied then of course the resources of the state can be prudently managed because imagine if the executive arms of the legislative arms of government is not checking the expenditures of the executive arms of government we have a lot of reckless spending but a situation we are in the executive for the fact that they have to approve presidential appointees or nominees they also have to approve budgets so what's happened it has a tendency to lead to what we call the prudent use of resources that's going to be a prudent use of resources of the state and that is also another good thing with regards to the principle of checks and balances the application of checks and balances of course ensure that there is a public control of public authority because sometimes people may want to use their power and positions but because one organs of government can also come in and check on the activities of another organs of government there is a guarantee that they will bring the other organs of government and authority under popular control so also look at another concept called centralization the term centralization refers to governmental administration which powers is concentrated on one single authority in short a centralized system of government there is no constitutional provision for the sharing of governmental powers between the single central authority and many other body but powers can be delegated to subordinate bodies in unitary states in a, in short a unitary state there is only one legislator one executive and one judiciary so local authorities that exist 
in a centralized state are created by the central authority that delegate power to them. Unitary state like Britain, Italy, France, exam etc. are examples of centralization of governmental administration. So what happened in centralization is that one, the is a system of governmental administrations. What happens? The powers are only centered in a single central authority that is the government and the constitution of that country does not make provisions for the sharing of powers between governmental power i mean regional bodies or local units but the central government if they want they can delegate if they want they can also withdraw their powers so that is what happened in a centralization so therefore there is no provisions for the sharing of powers with regional bodies as the case may be for the opposite of decentralization so let's look at the factors or conditions that give rise to the adoption of centralizations these factors include one the size of the country if the country is not too large it's not too big enough that country can adopt what we call a central system of government well let's talk about in a federal state like nigeria those countries will find it extremely difficult to have a centralized system of governance then of course the absence of tribal differences lack of fear of domination of one ethnic group that is another reason why countries adopt centralizations then of course you have a common languages and cultural lack of um what we call marked economic inequalities absence of minority group and strong loyalty to the central government with these conditions then it can give rise to the adoption of a centralization system of government so let's look at the merit what is a good thing about centralizations they include one that is a stronger and stable government in in a central system of government there is a stronger and stable government in as much as governmental powers are not shared among or between or any component or regional body there is a possibility of a stronger and stable government then of course it's also there is also reductions in cost because we don't have a duplication of rules all the power centered around a single authority that is a central government and because they're not going to duplicate some of their functions what happens we expect that there is a reduction in cost but when you look at countries that have a decentralized system of government especially for uh, a federal state it is very much expensive to operate but what happened in centralization there is a reduction in cost then of course the quicker decisions are being made in as much as they don't have to consult many regional bodies or component the central government can easily make decisions you also have a promotion of national unity because there is a central government everybody is answerable to so it has a tendency to promote national unity of course uniformity in the level of development development is going to be evil because government is going to develop a national strategic plan for the entire country but when we have a decentralized system development would not be evil because some components or regional bodies can be far developed as compared to the others but what happened in centralization there is uniformity in the level of development of course uh, it removes fractions a foster spirit of oneness no double loyalty it has flexible constitutions avoid waste of human and material resources and simple to operate and is less bureaucratic please don't forget to subscribe click on the subscribe button and also click on the like you can also add your comments below the comment section so want to know your reactions with regards to these tutorials so these are some of the merits of centralizations now we also want to examine the demerits the argument the disadvantages of a concept of centralization one the demerit of a unitary government are encouragement of dictatorship so what happens if 
say all the powers are being concentrated on a single administration single authority what happened there is going to be the emergence of dictatorship those central authority can become dictatorial then of course the central government is overboarding because it has